Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and I am so excited for today's video because I have been watching everyone else in the world that has this collection available to them already try it out and I've just been eagerly awaiting for it to drop in Australia and it finally did. So I picked up the new Chanel Spring Collection. I got one of the eyeshadow quads, the blush and the highlight. I also picked up a couple of the new Rouge Allure Velvet Lipsticks that they just released. I just, I could not. The packaging was just impeccable. So we're going to put them to the test today and see what I think of these products. And I've done swatches and everything for you guys. So hopefully that all sounds interesting to you. If it does, go ahead and do the YouTube -y things. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get into it. You guys are zoomed in nice and close. Uh, there's no filters, 4K, all of that stuff. Um, I've done my face up until bronzer so I still have highlight, blush, and eyes and lips to do. Everything on my face, including the Chanel products I used today, will be linked in the description box down below for you guys. They are affiliate links, so if you shop through them, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. There will also be timestamps in case you're only interested in certain parts. As soon as I saw the pics of this spring release from Chanel Beauty. I instantly knew I was going to pick these up. They look absolutely stunning. Chanel's actually a brand that I've been diving into more and more as of last year. And I don't think off the top of my head, I have come across a Chanel product that I don't absolutely love. Maybe one. Uh, but I have just absolutely loved and adored all of the Chanel products that I have tried so far. So I'm really excited to kind of dip into these ones. Now I picked up most of the collection. I only picked up one of the quads. I didn't pick up the pink quad and I didn't pick up the, is it the Balm Stick or the Balm Stick? B-A-U-M-E. Because I know that that kind of a product's just not my vibe. So I picked up the quad uh, in 78 Ravage, which is, I think that's how you pronounce it the blue one. This is just my aesthetic to be honest with you, like especially these colors. Oh, absolutely love and adore. And I will have a, I'll have short swatches of this shortly as well in the video, but I also will have um, a couple of like shorts and reels on my Instagram uh, of me unboxing this. So if you want to like see it untouched, if they're up already, check them out. But if not, they're coming very soon. This quad was 112 Australian dollars and I think it's about 68 USD. So depending on your currency and it's going to be your cost. 18 month expiry and made in Italy. And I have two other Chanel quads and I absolutely love their formula so far. So I'll be interested to see how I like this one. It's been an absolutely beautiful formula to work with. Really well suited, especially to those of you that maybe have textured lids or mature lids or just want a softer eyeshadow vibe, very beginner friendly as well. You do not need to be good at eyeshadow whatsoever to make these eyeshadows look good on your eyes. If you are looking for something like really a lot more pigmented, like a Pat McGrath Labs, Natasha Denona, maybe Glaminatrix type formula, Chanel's not going to be a vibe. This is very much a softer eyeshadow. So just keep that in mind. I absolutely love them. I think there's a time and a place for all looks personally for me, but I love all makeup. So, you know, I can be ridiculous about it. <laughs> you know, I also had to pick up the blush. So the blush is called Roses Coquillage, I think. Uh, 18 month expiry again and made in France. And it comes with your little typical brush that all of the Chanel blushes that I've purchased so far comes with. And then it is this beautiful, like, half and half with these like ripple effects. And I did read that the collection is based off of Gabrielle Chanel's uh, love of the ocean. And that's why it's kind of like these ripple effects. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Again, haven't come across a Chanel blush that I don't love yet as well. So I'm really excited to try that. I love that it's the two in one too, because you can either use one color or the other or mix them together. I really, really like that. So I'm excited to try that. This one I'm super excited to try because it just is mesmerizingly beautiful to look at at least. So this is the Lumiere de Loche. Lumiere de Ocean. Listen, I'm sorry to my French followers. I, I butcher your language. I'm so sorry. So this is the illuminator basically or the highlighter. Look at that. And again, has like the kind of ripples to... Uh, for like the ocean vibes kind of thing. Absolutely gorgeous. Like look at the shift. Can you see that? Oh, it really reminds me actually um, of a little, not exactly because this has like a bit of a, 
I don't know if duochrome is the right word, but it almost has like a duochrome shift and I'm not sure if it will pick up on camera, but it does shift to different kind of shades when you move it in the light. But it does remind me almost a little bit of like that Fenty Beauty How Many Carrots type vibe so far. So we'll see how this goes. And I will also, I've got the pearly white oversized highlighter, so I'll also pull that out and swatch it compared to that just in case you've got that already and want to see how it compares. And then lastly, I picked up the... Uh, a couple of the new Rouge Allure Velvet lipsticks. These are the limited edition ones. So they're new shades in limited edition packaging. I couldn't help myself when I saw this set. It's so gorgeous. I'm so ridiculous. Like, look at this. So this was 150 Australian dollars and I think it's like 100 USD. And it comes like in this two little set. It's midnight and 2 a.m. I think are the shades. 6 a.m. Midnight and 6 a.m. I think midnight is an exclusive to the set. Because I couldn't see it for sale individually. But I could be wrong. So this one right here first up is 6 a.m. And I will swatch these for you as well. It comes with like the beautiful Chanel. And like I just love this packaging. Is that not so chic? And then you like push it. And it comes out. And then you get your lipstick. So we will, I'll lip swatch these and I've already swatched them like on my hand and everything for you guys as well. The lipstick expiry is 18 months made in France. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to swipe into the swatches for the eyeshadow cord and then we will come back and do an eye look together. I'm going to start off with my Refa 33 and I'm going to go straight into the brown matte or the taupey matte shade, I guess, if you will call it that. And I'm just going to actually put this all over the lid and through the crease and we'll see how this performs. Oh, I forgot to say as well, sorry, I have primed using my Rare Beauty Eye Primer already. And one of the things that I love the most about Chanel eyeshadows usually is that they make incredible one and dones. So let's see how this one goes. Because this is my kind of a shade for a one and done too, to be honest. Oh yeah, look how easy that is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's the Chanel formula I know and love. Alright, well I love this shade. Absolutely gorgeous. And then I'm just picking up a What's Up Beauty R108 going into that exact same shade. I'm just going to run that underneath the lower lash line. Now I'm going to pick up this Delium Tools 775. Actually, before I do that, I'm not going to put any intensifiers on this side, but I'm going to put my Pat McGrath Labs intensifier stick on this eye. And I'm taking it pretty much out to the outer corner here just because I want to see, like, I like to show you guys how you can really make these shadows subtle, but also you can um, use the intensifiers to, like, give them a little bit more oomph if you'd like. So I'm going to take the Jellium Tools 775 Duo Fiber Shader Brush and I'm going to go into the blue. We have to try the blue. I actually feel like as I'm using this, my mum will love this quad. And I'm going to pretty much put this over all over the lid except for the very inner corner here yeah that's a really nice my mum will love this blue shade <laughs> absolutely love it that's very pretty and subtle it's like a, a satin this is like a satin finish without any like 
glitter glue or wetting the brush or anything. And it's not too like pigmented, so if you want it, it's like a very soft, subtle blue eye kind of thing. So same on this side, and you can already tell, see this is like more intense because I've got the intensifier stick down. Mm, that's quite pretty. I like that. For the very inner corner, I'm going to take this Ruffa O2 Mini and I just want to take a little bit of the gold. I want to try all the shades. I'll put that on here. Mm, again, a very, very soft and subtle formula. I personally like it with the intensifiers more, but also. This side is nice if you are looking for a very, like, really satin type vibe. I might just take a little bit with my finger here. I just want to see how much it builds up with that. Mm. Mm, I like that. Now, you could totally just leave that there. I want to go a little bit further. I'm just going to pick up that same Duo Fiber brush from Delium Tools, and I want to go into this little sparkly white shade. And I'm going to tap that. Oh, yeah, that's so pretty. So, again, like the softest of soft little fairy dustings here without anything, just dry. And then what I'm going to do on this other eye, I'm just going to take a little bit of my setting spray, spray the brush, and then see how that applies it. Oh yeah, that's nice. Mm, that's cool. That adds like a really pretty shift. Alright, now let me try with my finger as well. Alright, we're going to leave that there. I'm going to put my Victoria Beckham Cocoa Liner on my top waterline. And I've got the Chanel uh, Beige Lumiere 74 eyeliner and I'm going to pop that in my lower waterline here. pop this KVD mascara on. This is the new one. I'm just testing it at the moment. So eyes are all finished and I will talk about my thoughts at the end. So stay tuned for that around that quad and whether or not I think it's worth it. Let's now do this gorgeous highlighter. So it has like a bit of a, again, I don't know if it'll show on camera, but it does have this like kind of purpley ultraviolet kind of shift to it. And then I wanted to just show you in comparison to the oversized pearly white. So they are, they seem like a bit of a similar formula, but they are a different kind of shade. And so I've swatched them on the back of my hand here as well. And I don't know, see, this is the new one. And see how it has like a slight kind of bluey purple shift to it, whereas the pearly white is just straight kind of white slash clear. Now they both do have ever so slight little glitter specks to them. Um, I've found with the pearly white one that when I put it on the face and then I use my setting spray over the top, that they kind of just really melt into the skin. So I don't find, it's not a chunky glitter to the point, like, I don't like a chunky glitter highlighter. Um, so I'm completely fine with it and I quite like it. But if you don't like any kind of glitter specs at all whatsoever, period, like, they're very, very tiny little fairy ones, but just keep that in mind because you might not actually like the highlighter formula then. But if you have pearly white and you like this and you like the shade of this new one, then I think you'll like the formula. But let's try it. So I haven't put any... Um, highlighter on my face yet. I'm just going to take my Smashbox brush here and pop a little bit of this on. Yeah, you can definitely see little glitter specks. 
just little ones. I don't know if you can see them on camera. I mean, that's very pretty though. They're so fine. And I don't have any liquid highlight on underneath either, by the way. Oh, that's pretty. I quite like that. I think if you have a deep skin tone, I don't think this will what suit you. I don't think. But let us know in the comments if you are a deeper skin tone and what you think. Because I've never worked on anyone else's skin tone but my own. But I think that's really pretty. If you get up super close, you can see tiny little flecks of glitter. But you can't see them like when I'm just looking in the mirror or anything. From back here. And usually when I set my face at the end, they kind of melt into the skin. So we'll see how that goes. Alright. I'm not mad at that though. I actually quite like that so far. So we'll see how that goes. Now let's try the blush. Absolutely beautiful. I'm actually just going to use, I've got two Ruffa 5 cheek blush brushes right here that are completely clean. If my camera will focus. All right, well, you can kind of see it through the blurry thing. And I'm going to take this purple color on one side of the face and then the other color on the other. To be honest, I would normally just swirl these together, but for the review, we'll do. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh. The thing that I like about Chanel blushes normally is they're very buildable. So you don't have to worry too much about looking like a clown. Oh, that's really pretty. That's like a really nice, pretty kind of mauvey pink. Oh, I like that. I like that. Now, normally I would also have cream blush on under this as well, just keep in mind. But if you're not someone that uses cream blush, that's what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. That's very subtle. All right, let's now take a clean rougher five and I'm going into the corally side. I don't want to ruin the embossing. Yeah, that's pretty. I just love how buildable these are. Oh, I like that. So this side is the purple. And then this one is this one. I like them. And I think mixed together, they'll look absolutely beautiful. I really like those. How pretty. How pretty. Yeah. All right. I'll just take an ever so little bit of my Urban Decay setting spray. Just lightly set my face. Yeah, pretty much all the glitters like melted in. It's very natural, that highlight. I like it. But I will say, if you are opposed to any speck of fairy dusting at all, don't get it. You won't like it. All right, so let us try these. I just <laughs> cannot get enough of the packaging of these. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to quickly insert swatches of both of these shades right now for you. I think I'm gonna try Midnight first because I don't think this red will like look absolutely perfect with this eye. Now I don't have a perfectly matching lip liner, so I'm just gonna take the Gucci lip liner in Joanna. Uh, no, this isn't Joanna, sorry, this is just shade six. And then this is the lipstick. So let's go ahead and apply. Oh, that is nice and pigmented. I really like the shape of this bullet because it's got such a fine pointy tip that you can really like apply it easily and precisely. So that is midnight and that is gorgeous. What do you guys think? I really like that. Well, I think that's pretty. That's such a nice red. Very comfortable on the lips. Uh, like a, it feels like a satin, like it feels very hydrating and moisturizing. It's definitely not dried down to a matte at all. And super pigmented. Hmm, I like that. All right, let's try. Also, actually important to note because I usually find with uh, high-end lipsticks especially, I find that they can taste like fragrance if they have a fragrance in them and this does not taste like anything. Like I cannot taste fragrance at all, so that's exciting. All right, let me take this one off and we will try, I think it's 6 a.m. So for this one, I'm gonna take my Chanel lip liner in 158. And 
And then let us take 6 a.m. I think they're supposed to be times, right? Or 06, 06, 00. So that one is 6 a.m. I quite like that. It's like a dark brown morph. Morphing dark brown, if you would. Or like a really, really brown leaning plum. And I don't own any shades like this. So it's 6 a.m. What do you guys think? Oh, I like that. Mmm, that's really pretty. I, I really like that. All right, uh, let me go and put jewelry on and stuff. We will zoom out and I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on this collection and whether or not I would recommend it, who I recommend it for, that kind of jazz. All right, my friends, finished look using the Chanel Spring Collection and the new lipsticks. What do you guys think? I mean, I think it came together really nicely. I really do. My under eyes aren't looking so crash hot today, but that's a completely separate, like, issue. It's actually, I just think my skin is not doing so crash hot today, to be honest. And uh, nothing to do with this review, but just a side note. Okay, let us uh, let me tell you whether or not, or let me tell you my thoughts on these products. Now, just keep in mind, very much my own opinion. Also, especially when it comes to luxury makeup, everyone's value of a dollar is different. So only you can decide, ultimately, at the end of the day, whether or not you want to spend your hard-earned coins on luxury makeup or whatever it is in this world that you're spending your money on so you know just take it with a grain of salt it's just my two cents this quad oh so i like it i don't regret picking it up but i'm also not like i'm not using this and being as blown away as what i was when i used the eclat de nu i think is how i pronounce it quad and also the uh, paru ventier quad so apart from this shade this shade is just like chef's kiss what dreams are made of for me but you know that's just a me thing these are beautiful don't get me wrong and i really do like how subtle they are i really really do it's just i don't know the initial kind of use of this hasn't impressed me like the other two quads where i really was just like these are freaking amazing but I do like it. The quality is absolutely beautiful. Like I said, this shade is just an absolute standout to me. Like I really, really, really love this shade. These are just really subtle and like subtle satin. So you can use the intensifiers and like spray your brush and they're going to amp up a little bit, but they're just not going to, you're not going to get much more oomph out of them than like a nice satin. And this one's really pretty. And actually I do think like this one, if I put this over intensifiers, it would really be quite spectacular. So overall, I think the quad is beautiful. I personally don't regret picking it up. I actually can see myself getting a lot of use out of this. But I will say, I don't think it's probably one of those like must-have quads unless you are like really specifically wanting to give it a go or a Chanel makeup lover or it's just like on your must-try list. But if you're kind of just like Meh, on the fence about it, then I can like I would maybe suggest skipping this one and picking up a different one. The blush. Oof. I really love this blush. I really like the Chanel blush formula. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I just love how soft and buildable this is. Uh, clearly this is not going to work on probably like much more than like a medium up skin tone. So, you know, shade range obviously needs a lot of work. Uh, but in terms of the formula, it's so buildable, soft, blurring, lovely. I really, really enjoy it. I will say I probably would recommend the new La Beige's Healthy Winter Glow Blushes over this one, to be honest. There's just something really magical about that formula, like really, really magical. But if you are someone that wants like more of a straight, just straight down the line matte formula, then maybe this is the one for you. I really like this though. I regret nothing. Like I think, again, if you've got your eyes on it and you love a Chanel blush, go for it because uh, yeah, I, I really do like it. The highlighter I think is just going to be dependent on you. I regret nothing. I love this. I think the shift to it is absolutely gorgeous. I own nothing like it. For me, it's still nice and subtle and natural, but if you do not like an ever so soft fairy dusting, like I said, usually like when I use my setting spray, 
the fairy dusting goes away for me and I'm totally happy with it, but I do like to caveat with that. Like if you're someone that doesn't like that at all, do not even bother. But if you don't mind that, and you like the look of this, I say go for it because this is absolutely gorgeous and it's kind of one of those products you need to see in real life to like really get it. But again, like maybe go in store and like touch it and feel it before you pick it up if you're a bit on the fence about it. The lip products, absolutely amazing. Absolutely gorgeous. Everything down to the packaging, chef's kiss for me, like part of the appeal, I mean, I love and adore makeup but I love, love, love and adore luxury makeup because I love the whole experience for me. The packaging and how it looks aesthetically really plays into part into the part of how much I love my makeup, right? That's just a me thing. Not everyone has to be like that at all. And I just love this. This just makes my heart sing. But also, this formula is absolutely gorgeous. I've not tried this lip formula from Chanel before. Stunning. So opaque and pigmented. While it feels like I'm not wearing anything on my lips. And it's still really moisturizing and hydrating. But I do feel like this is going to last for quite some time on my lips. I can see myself needing to reapply this after a few hours. I don't think it, it's not like a liquid lip longevity. But for me, I don't want that because usually that comes with like a full matte lip. And I don't like the... I don't like to deal with all that. So for me, this is like kind of the perfect long wear type formula for me. And I really love the shades. I don't own anything like them. So yeah, the win, the lip products for me are a massive win. That is my two cents on this collection. I personally regret nothing. It's absolutely gorgeous. But uh, I want to hear from you now. Let me know. Have you picked this up already? Are you thinking of picking it up or just some of the pieces? What do you think? What do you think? Let me know. And uh, what do you think of the look? All right. I hope you enjoyed the video and this was helpful in some way, shape or form. If you made it this far, you know you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. And I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.